Hello, my name is Brenda. My channel is Handwork Maniac. Welcome. It's March 25th, I think, Saturday, and it snowed again yesterday, so it does not feel like spring, even though we passed the spring equinox. It's, we've got, uh, I don't know, two or three inches of snow on the ground. <laughs> it's going to be a, a slow start to spring this year, I think, but that's okay. It's, it is warmer during the day, staying in the 30s, so that's nice. Um, I don't, oh, I have one item of housekeeping. I keep telling you about Blit Stitch. His channel is Blit Stitch. He's also, he does fabulous, fabulous cross stitch. But he um, is also a programmer and he has designed an app. And I keep getting the name wrong. So this time I'm just going to show it to you. It's called Cross Stitch Journal. And that is what the picture looks like if you're in the app store looking for it. His channel is Blit Stitch. His name is Brian. It's a fabulous app. You can put all of your projects in there, um, things that are kitted, things are not kitted. You can keep a list of what you still need to buy for it. Then you can keep track of your progress on it, what fabric it's on. If you want to log your stitches on it every time you work on it, it will keep all of these fabulous graphs for you, create graphs for you, showing, telling you about if you kept stitching at this rate, when would you be done, um, all kinds of his, if you're familiar with his channel and you know about his Excel spreadsheet that he had forever, it does, it tracks all the same things as his Excel spreadsheet so that you can do all of the graphs and stats that are so fabulous. Then you can uh, put in there when you finished it and how long it took and all of that stuff. It's a fabulous, fabulous app. I love it. And I finally got the name right. I'm so sorry, Brian. <laughs> Okay, I don't think, I think the only finish I have is my March snapshot, which is in my office. So Andrew, my son Andrew, who edits my videos, he's fabulous, will put a video of it, a video, a picture of it right here. And that sits in my office and I have started the April snapshot and I'll show that to you in a minute in the, when I show you everything I've worked on. My daughter Marie, her channel is Stitchy Marie and also on Instagram, Stitchy Marie, has just finished like two or three things. So you should check out her Instagram and maybe um, tell her she needs to make a new video because you'd love to see her finishes. And my daughter, Catherine, my oldest daughter, Catherine, her Instagram is Insanity Stitcher. She just barely got her, she finished Heaven and Earth Designs uh, Chris, James Christensen's fairy tales five, four years ago <clears throat> and she just got it framed and it looks so amazing it's just incredible I will put a picture of that or Andrew will put a picture of that right here that is so fun to see framed and she is going like gangbusters on her new heaven and earth designs Arcadia you can check out her progress on her Instagram channel insanity stitcher Instagram, yeah, account. <laughs> and I think next is everything that I've worked on since the last video, which was quite a few things. I, it was a crazy, I just worked, I don't know, for some reason I worked on a million different things. So you're going to see lots of different projects. And I did have some, I had zero plans to start anything since the last video but I started several things. So those will show up in my pile of things I've worked on as well. All right, let's start with, this is the one I work on on Sundays. It is called Lost No More. It's a gold, a dimensions kit. The artwork is by Greg Olson. Oh, and I have my um, Easter's coming what is it, two weeks? My spring break is in about a week. Uh, so I put out my Easter stitching. I'll do a quick video of that after I'm done here and Andrew will put it at the end if you wanna see those up close. But this one I've been working on getting several hours in it on every Sunday. Well, most Sundays. My goal is to finish it in the next 
few months, I hope. We always, as stitchers, don't we always underestimate how much longer we have on a project. Wow, there's so much done. We have to take off three sides now to show it. No, we might as well just take off the last one. And this is where it is. Oh, I just caught the needle. Okay. I've been working on these trees right here in the background behind. Oh, sorry, here it is all of it. I'm not quite done with this tree yet. I have a couple more colors to go. I like to color complete an area or an object on projects like this. That's fun for me. There is a large sheep right here with his head right here. This is just fabric that I sewed onto the edge so that when I had my Q snap on it over here and it was under my lap frame. Uh, you can see more about that in video number 19 if you want to know what kind of lap frame I use. It just helped it me to be able to move the Q snap over further so that I could get to the stitching easier. Only reason why that fabric is on there. This is the kit fabric and the kit floss using however many strands of floss it told me to use for that symbol. Mostly two. Some of it's full cross, some of it's half cross, just depending on which symbol it is. It creates a lot of um, dimension in it, I think. This one is a Lenarte kit called Four Seasons. This is what it will look like when it's finished. I am using the kit fabric, which is an even weave, but I'm not sure if it is 32 count or 28 count. It came with the kit. I started in the middle so that I could work on whatever season we were in. I could kind of move out from there and then whatever we were season we were in, I could work on that part of it. <clears throat> oh my goodness, sorry. <laughs> Good grief. I have not started um, working on the spring section yet, even though the first day of spring was a couple days ago. That's on my to-do list this week. It's going to be very big when it's done, but I love it. This part of spring over here that I'll be working on again soon, this week I hope. This part is summer. <laughs> That's what I did last year during the summer. There's that middle bouquet of flowers where I started. This part is fall, it has the least amount done. And then I have been working on winter and was hoping to finish this cute bunny right here, but I have not. I did finish these leaves. Using the kit, floss, two strands of floss over two fabric threads. Okay, next is a new start. This is all um, Robin's fault. I almost called you Jennifer. <laughs> this is all Robin's fault. This is blooming tiny town. I want to do all of these tiny towns eventually. I think they are so cute. But this one, the colors in this one just, oh, I bought my copy at the Craft Center of Fine Stitchery in Salt Lake City. That is my LNS. I love them. And I got the floss there for it. I think I pulled the fabric out of my fabric storage. Although the 
Craft Center has lots of beautiful fabric too. And this is what I have so far. I think I have a, a bird section and one more house to go. I believe this is 32 count swank by, all right, where is the tag? Fortnite Fabrics. I think I bought this at Stitch West. I did um, change a couple of colors because the dye lot that I had just wasn't um, making me happy. So I changed to a different, some floss I had in my storage, in my floss collection. Because I wanted it more pink or more red or whatever. <laughs> But most of it is the called for floss. Robin says we need to stitch all of the tiny towns, which I agree. I told her we need to start a hashtag. All the tiny towns or something like that. All the tiny towns stitch along. At least they're small. Those, oh. Oh, I showed you the pattern. That's by Hands On Art and Hand? Hands On Design. Sorry, losing my mind. Heart in Hand. Those are all by Heart in Hand. The brand new um, one about the ocean, the sea just came out at market. And then right before market was the honeybee one town. I love all of them. Robin is Hobbyholic on Instagram. If you want to see her, she's already done the patriotic one. <clears throat> and I think one more. And she's finished Bloomingtown already. This one is sweet like chocolate. It is out of the World of Cross Stitch magazine, May 2019. It's by Emma Congdon. This is the model photo. I love chocolate. I love this design. It is on, oh, what count? It is on even weave, uh, 32 count even weave in the color petals that I got from 123 Stitch. It has the very slightest, um, some pink on it and some green. Very light pastel splashes of pink and green. You can barely see them even in person, but I thought it was perfect for this project. That is what I have so far. I'm loving it. Lots of backstitch, but I love it. It has been so fun. I love the little bit of green that it has, and I love where the pink comes in with all the brown, of course, because it is chocolate. Ooh. Two strands, two strands of floss over two fabric threads, and it is the called for DMC. And I worked on Serenity Harbor for one day by By the Bay Needle Arts. This was originally a 12 part stitch along. She still sells it as 12 different patterns on her Etsy store. It calls for DMC, but I uh, substituted any time that there was just large blocks of color of a solid color, I switched out for a variegated, either a silk or a uh, over dyed cotton. This water is just one color of dinky dyes silk, and then a darker color right here at the edge of dinky dyes silk. And I just stitched it in like puddly shapes so that the 
variegation kind of looked like water, but that is all one, one color floss. And I worked down here this time, got more of this done. Oh, sorry, no, I worked over here. You got this fence done and a part of this hill. It is a beautiful piece. I always love working on it. And it is on 40 count lakeside something. Is it on here? Lakeside vintage lentil, 40 count. One strand of floss over two fabric threads. Full cross. I was re-watching my last video just to remember what I had already showed you so that I could remember what I had worked on since then. In one of the projects, I totally said one over one, and I'm sitting there watching it going, that's not one over one, that's that's one over two, or <laughs> two over two. I don't know. I'm sorry. The description box is almost always correct. So if you if I say something that you think is like totally crazy, check the description box. This is Long Dog Samplers, The New Normal. It is charted for just one color. I am using Sulky 12 weight cotton threads and I just chose six, eight colors. And I'm just kind of deciding kind of as I go. I kind of made a plan before I started of what parts I was going to do and what color. But I have some pinks and some reds and some greens, some neutrals. The colors I'm using are in the description box. This is a fabulous project bag by Victoria's Crafty Room. Her channel is now Two Georgia Peaches. She's doing a floss tube with her daughter. I'm using one strand of the Sulky 12 weight cotton over two fabric threads on 40 count antique even, no, linen. It's 40 count linen. Antique white, I believe. I finished this side over here and started on this bubble which is in the bottom corner See if we can get that this I started with this light green on this one this was the very first bubble that I did and then decided it was too light so I changed to this light green for the rest of it but then I needed to use this really light minty green somewhere else in the pattern or it would look funny so I used it for the back stitching that is in these leaves right here. And that might be the only other place I put it in. I might find some tiny little thing. Um, maybe as I'm working across and add just a little bit more of it. I am loving it. It is so fun to work on. One strand of silky 12 weight over two fabric threads. Last fall in September, I went to the Crazy Woman Stitching Retreat, put on by Misty Connolly. Her Instagram account is Misty Connolly. I'll put that in the description box below. She's having a retreat coming up in April, and then she's doing another one in September again. The April one is in St. George. The September one is in Casper, Wyoming again. That's where we were. Next to the Crazy Woman River is right by the hotel, so that's why it was called the Crazy Woman Stitching Retreat. Jenny of Cricklewood Crossing, that's her channel and her Instagram, Cricklewood Crossing, designed this for the retreat. Beautiful pattern. And this is the logo. These flowers are right off of the retreat logo.
And mine is on 40 count pewter by Picture This Plus. I finished the bird. It calls for DMC. That big brown flower that's right here, I want to try doing that with an overdyed silk. So I made this snowflake right here with the color I'm going to use, just so it was in another couple places besides just the big flower. Otherwise, I am using, oh, and this, the taupe color that was around this flower was this lighter color, oh, of the beak right here. And it just wasn't showing up because of the color fabric that I chose. So I am using the darker color right here that's also called for in the chart to do that. I am loving this one. It is so fun. That silk color is Silk and Colors Honeyed Turquoise. And I picked it because it has the turquoise in it from the pattern, and it also has the yellows and the oranges and the browns in it. It's like it was perfectly dyed to go with these DMC colors. It's a beautiful silk floss. Silken Colors Honeyed Turquoise. So I'm gonna do that big middle flower with that color. I'll probably try, um, I'm not gonna go back and forth in stripes. I'll probably try kind of making a sh uh, each petal shape, working from the outside in, see what that looks like. I'm using one strand of floss over two fabric threads. And Jenny of Cricklewood Crossing also makes beautiful project bags. Check out her Etsy shop. This is one of the bags that she made that I have purchased from her. Look at the beautiful zipper pull. I bought this one at Stitch West. It's got the really nice heavy duty plastic on it and she um, quite often will do a quilt panel inside like that where it has a picture. I love her bags. And she's my friend, lives local here in Utah for a little while longer. They're going to move back east, but we have her for a little bit more. I worked on Beachcomber for one day by Carolyn Manning Designs. It is on 25 count even weave antique white or off white or whatever color it's called. And I've been working on this section right here. I just kind of pick a color and then move down until I run out of that color. And then I pick another color up here near the top and move down. That's been fun. Catherine, my oldest daughter, bossy boss daughter, um, finished this edge for me and did quite a bit of stitching in it as well last year for my birthday and Mother's Day. That was awesome. Using the called for DMC one strand of floss over one fabric thread, one over one on 25 count full cross. And that one really is one over one. <laughs> And I worked of colors of water for one day. The um, actual name is Defarben Des Wassers. Farben, sorry, a hard American R in there. It's a German company that translates to colors of water. The name of the company is Der Werkstatt für Historisch Stickmuster. I ordered it from their German website. You can. It's also available inside the Silk app. The Silk app is very similar to Pattern Keeper. The only difference is, is that you buy the patterns inside the app from what is available there, but they have some, uh, lots of designers, beautiful patterns. Lots more by, from the same designer on the same idea. But I bought the PDF from their German website. Uh, 
I finished this square, finished up this medallion and this part over here. And, oh, that's the last thing I was working on was that dark blue. There are six rows, so I have four rows done, two more to go. This is the most beautiful piece to work on. So calming, such a calm pattern and calm colors. I love it. It calls for a Vera Soie, Soie d'Alger threads, which is silks, which is what I am using, the called for silks. But there is a DMC conversion on the chart. One strand of silk over, oh, what's it on? It's on 46 count antique white linen, one strand of silk over two fabric threads. This was another new start. One of my favorite designers, Little Dove Designs in the UK, did a mystery stitch along called The Sewing Room. This is part one. The next part will come out at the beginning of April. There are six parts. I'm using the called for DMC. I bought the you pay for the whole chart at once on their Etsy site is where I purchased it. Little Dove Designs. And then um, they send you one section a month in your email. And this is, what color of fabric is this? Is this frost? I believe this is 46 count frost from Bee Stitchy. Oh, there's the tag. Yes, 46 count frost linen from Bee Stitch Me. It's a beautiful blue, beautiful frosty blue color. I'm using one strand of floss over two fabric threads, the called for DMC. And I have that first section finished. That is gonna be a fun one to work on. I had a couple of several days where I worked on Bless This House by Catherine Theron. It was a class that I took. It's a class piece. You have to take the class from her to buy the kit. I think I came down here and finished this part of the border and then started on the grass right here has a house and some other things, uh, three bee scaps that are all done in three different specialty stitches are sitting on the grass here. I believe this looks like a 32 count linen. It was the fabric that came with the kit. And the kit, it's the kit floss. I believe some of it, I think some of it is over dyed cotton. Some of it is over dyed silk. And some solid color silk, I believe. But she doesn't tell you what the brands are. So it just comes in the kit. I know that they are branded floss. I just don't know what they are. All right, this is the Christmas Afghan. Stony Creek Christmas Village, Afghan. I am using the called for fabric, which is 20 count white Lugana. And I'm using four strands of floss according to the directions, same as the directions say of the DMC over two fabric threads. So they're great big stitches because it's 20 count Lugana, but you're working over two, two threads with four strands of floss. So I cut really long pieces and I use two strands and fold it over and do the loop start method to make four strands. And this is still all Julie's fault of stitching in the cabin. Her and her daughter are both stitching this. 
And when I saw it on their channel, every time I thought, oh, I have got to stitch that. It's all DMC except for this blue right here is a variegated blue DMC variegated floss with all those different lights and blues. It's so pretty. It's going to be on all the snowflakes in the pattern. I just think it's the most gorgeous pattern. I love it. And it's fun to work on because you, um, Hallie, Stitching Big Things with Hallie did this same afghan yes and she was talking about how you just feel like you're going so fast because you're covering so much real estate while you're stitching those huge stitches and i agree you filled up your q snap and it's time to move the q snap before you know it i've been trying to work on this every month i think i'll do it on the 25th of every month which is today so i think i'll pull it out and work on it today And then apparently I have an illness because <laughs> I started another Afghan. This is Jim Shore Countryside Afghan by Wichelt and Mill Hill, which means it does have beads and it is full coverage. Well, each section is full coverage. It's stitched on an Afghan fabric that is pre-woven with these with this plaid pattern in it. So you're stitching inside of the plaid squares that are woven into the fabric. I bought this Afghan fabric and this pattern from Stony Creek. I've also bought the other pattern in Afghan fabric from Stony Creek. It does call for DMC. Stony Creek sells the bead pack for it. And it is also four strands of floss over two fabric threads. And the Afghan fabric is 18 count antique white slash ivory fireside Afghan. The pattern of the weave is fireside. There are several colors of Fireside. This is the antique white slash ivory version of Fireside, which means that the plaid, the woven plaid parts in it are an ivory color. I have just done the first square. Used an entire skein of 33.25 in the first square. This is the Afghan fabric folded in half. <laughs> uh, sorry, now I lost it. There we go. And this is the first square that I did. You can see these Jim Shore swirlies in the clouds. This one is fun to work on. The pattern tells you how many packs of beads you're going to need, but it does not tell you how many skeins of floss you're going to need for each color. And I knew, because I'm stitching the Christmas afghan, that some of those colors are going to use like 20 skeins of floss, the ones that are used the most, like 33.25. So I emailed Wichelt, and they emailed me back within a day and sent me the chart showing how many skeins of each color you would need to stitch it. They were very nice. Oh, and they also sent me one, um, two corrections that have been made to the pattern. Highly recommend customer service at Wichelt. They're fabulous. I just emailed them at the email address that's on the back of the pattern. I worked on, did I say that was four strands of floss over two fabric threads? Yes. This is Summer Schoolhouse by Brenda Gervais. There are four different leaflets and you can make it into five pillows. This shows it made into five pillows. These two little pillows come in the same chart, which is why there's only four charts. And I am gonna finish it just like this or have it finished. I haven't decided yet. 
and I'm using a, the called for fabric, which is 28 count mushroom Lugana even weave. And I'm stitching with one strand of floss over one fabric thread. So it is one over one with the called for over dyed cottons. And I left it the whole big piece of fabric still as one piece. So it'd be easier to get into my Q snap. So I stitched the first chart right here. The second one has two in it. It has the, the girl one and the boy one. And that's how far I am on. That's what I worked on this time was this one. It's going to be so lovely. I would love to have this finished by the summer. By the time I go to StitchCon would be nice. I'm going to Weekend B. This is Primavera in Sitta, so Spring in the City, by Corchete Agogo, or some people say Crosetta Gogo. She is on Etsy. which is where I got it was, you can also buy her in needlework stores, print chart. I bought mine on Etsy as a PDF. And she um, looked at what language I speak in my order. And she sent me the pattern because there's several places where it has words on it. She sent it to me in English and then there on the main pattern. And then there are a couple of, um, supplemental pages that show the words in a couple of other languages. Italian, I'm sure, because she is Italian. I can't remember what the other ones were. I've been working on the top row of buildings up here. It's so cute. I love this. It's on 46 count natural linen. The called for DMC, one strand of floss over two fabric threads. It's very it's very whimsical. I love that it has houses on it. You've probably noticed almost everything I stitch has houses on it. I love the pinks and greens, the spring colors on it. I love that the bunny is standing on a carrot on a stepladder, which is on a rickety, well, not rickety, but a not very solid table while she's watering the flowers. It's such a cute pattern. I love this color natural because the white shows up on it and there's a lot of white in this pattern. So cute. One strand of floss over two fabric threads on 46 count. And then I told you that I finished the March snapshot and we Andrew put a photo in for you because I don't have it with me, it's at work. And I started on the April one. These are snapshots by Pine Mountain Designs. They have one for every month. Look at those cute bunnies. And I love her green boots, her rain boots. I'm using the called for over dyed cotton and some DMC. That's what it's um, charted for. But there is a DMC conversion for all of it if you want. Oh, and this is, mm, what fabric is this? It is Picture This Plus 32 Count Sprite Lugana. A lovely lavender-y pinky color. And I think I've just started on her raincoat. And I think the yellows are showing up so nice on there with the purpley pink color. But April's in like a week. <laughs> so I need to get a move on. Two, 32 count, two strands of floss of the called for floss 
except I did substitute a couple colors from floss I had in my storage because I didn't like how the that dye lot looked. Over two fabric threads. All right, Kingdom of Books. It is by a Russian company that translates to something like make it with your own hands, but it does call it Kingdom of Books. It does have um, Russian and English in all the instructions. I am not stitching this background up here or this shelf down here. I am doing a little bit of that background around the tops of the books so that the white trim on them will show up. And then I am stitching just two or three rows of this shelf down here so that that has a shadow so it will anchor the houses so they're not floating in the air. I've done this, no, I've done this half and finished this middle section and did this book. I'm using the kit floss, but not the kit fabric. I chose an over dyed 18 count Ada that was similar to this color up here so that I did not have to stitch that background. And there was something, oh, I watched a documentary. Okay, the, the pattern's in Russian. The titles of the books are in Russian, but the when you translate the books, they're all about the Netherlands. And I watched a documentary about the canals in the Netherlands and these houses that are along the canals in the Netherlands. And they, I love this, whoever the artist was on this artwork, they talked about each one of these distinctive styles of the tops of these houses that are in the Netherlands and told you the name of that style and what they talked about this triangle shaped one and this, there's one that has this one right here, the long neck style. And the, it was so fascinating to, to hear them talk about each one of these styles and to think, I stitched that, I st that's on my pattern. I remember that shape up there. So they did a great job of making the books look like those distinctive styles that are along the canals in the Netherlands, depending on, and they all came from different eras, you know, some of them were popular in this 10 years, and then the next 10 years, a different shape on the top was popular. So that was so fun. My friend Sharon and I have been doing this as a stitch along. And we're trying to finish a half a book a month. We figured it would take us three years. We um, had a hiatus last year when neither one of us were working on it for several months, but now we are back on track. I decided just to go ahead and finish this book. I might not, I can't remember if that is April's part or if that just gets me caught up for the end of March. I'll have to check, but I just wanted to finish the book and be done with it for a little while. So that's what I did. This section behind the gates, right? Oh, and I found out that these, all of these houses along the canals, a lot of them, have private gardens in the back. You know, the houses go all the way around and so only the residents can get into that inner private garden area. So I think that what you're seeing through these gates is one of those private gardens that's back there behind these houses. I thought that was cool too. But the, the pattern called for just one strand of floss back there so it would look far away in the distance but because i'm using this over dyed ada um, i knew that that would that tan color would muddy up all those colors if i only used one strand so i went ahead and used two strands so fun on that one And the other stitch along I have that I'm participating in is Sunnyside Sampler by The Drawn Thread. Several of us that went to Stitch West and that live here locally are doing this as a stitch along. You're welcome to join us. It is Sunnyside, I think it's Sunnyside Sampler, S-A-L. The hashtag and is also the hashtag oct oct to oct so oct to oct 
Stitch Along, S-A-L, October to October Stitch Along, because we started it at Stitch West in October, and we hope we divided it into 12 sections so that we could finish it at Stitch West this coming year. Um, if you want to see a picture of how it's divided, go to Colette's. Her YouTube channel is The Highway Stitcher. You could watch that because she probably shows it in there every time. Or her Instagram account is Colette Stitches, I believe. I'll put that in the description box below with the hashtags. So you can find it. She has a picture of how she has divided it into 12 sections. And then uh, Drawn Thread calls for... Oh, sorry, that was the pattern. I was hoping that was the floss list. Calls for all silk floss, which is what I am stitching it with. I think it's mostly NPI. I think it's all NPI silks. And um, I had a few friends who wanted to stitch it in DMC, so I did a conversion myself into DMC, even though I'm not using that conversion. And that is on my Instagram channel. If you want to see that, it is also on Colette's Instagram channel account. There's a picture of how we, what the DMCs that I came up with. Because the drawn thread doesn't have a DMC conversion on this chart. <coughs> Excuse me. So here's what I have. Finished that big red house. The, there are some, not a lot, some minimal specialty stitches on here. The flowers down in the alphabet are a little bit of a, like a straight stitch flower kind of shape. And the verse across the top of the song, Keep on the Sunny Side, is over one. So be aware that there is that over one section. But most of it is regular cross stitch. I did do some back stitching on these windows because the NPI silks that I'm using, the color was too close to the window frame, so you couldn't see that. Oh, and I backstitched the edge of this gray house with this red color from the windows because it was so close to the fabric color. I changed, I'm not using the called, no, I am using the called for fabric. It is 32 count natural. That one is fun to work on. And not very much, well, that's relative, I guess, depending on how much stitching time you have, but it's not been a, a lot to get, for me to get done every month. It's quite doable. This one is a Mill Hill kit, part of their Mighty Oak Quartet. This is Winter Oak. It is not a button and beads. It did come with 14 count Ada to stitch it on. That's that tan color. All the button and beads kits come with perforated paper. But I'm doing a lot of the button and beads kits and wanted to keep them in the same frame in my office and just change them out with the seasons or the months or whatever. So I went ahead and stitched mine on brown perforated paper that is very similar to the fabric that came in the kit. I am finished with this top section, except that there's a whole bunch of beads snowflakes in the air, which because it's on perforated paper, I'm trying to decide how to, if I use white thread to sew them on, you'll be able to see the white carrying across the back because they're all just one bead spaced out from each other, you know? So I think I, I might leave them off. If I put them on, I'll, try, I'll get out some invisible thread to sew them on so that I can carry the strand across the back. There is a lot of beads. There's beads in the border. The snow is, I don't know, a third beads. The, the scarf is red beads. The hat is blue beads and red. Same on the boy. Beautiful, beautiful piece. The section down here has snowflakes in it. I just need to finish that and finish out the border. By the time I get it finished though, Winter will be over. The snow will actually be gone. Oh. All right. 
oh, using the called for floss that came with, I just wasn't using the fabric that came with the kit, but I am using the floss that came with the kit. Two strands of floss, full cross on the perforated paper. This one is Winter Montage. There is a pain-free crafts version that is full coverage. Uh, Stitch and Mommy is doing this one. Colette, the Highway Stitcher is doing this one. Several other people I know that I watch are working on these for the seasons. I, th but there is also a Jan Lynn kit version. It comes with 14 count Ada. I'm not using the fabric that it came with. I love the coloring on these, but I love that this is much doable, more doable for me. Not as big of a pattern. Um, I'll be able to finish them someday. <laughs> I wasn't sure if I'd ever be able to finish these, which sometimes I don't care, but on this one I decided to go with the Jan Lynn kit. So I am using the called the floss that came in the kit, but instead of using that 14 count, I think it came with Fiddlers. It's not white. I keep telling you it's white. It's not. It's like a Fiddlers. Reminds me of the old Fiddlers Ada. Kind of an oatmeal colored with specks in it. Ada that it came with. Can't tell if that's 14 count or 16 count. 14 count. Comes with 14 count Ada in this oatmeal color. I was hoping that if I changed the color of the fabric to something that was closer to this, I thought it was upside down for a minute, <laughs> that it would look more like this. And I'm doing the back stitching a little different sometimes to make it look more like this. So I guess it's kind of a mix between the two, right? I am using 36 count linen that is light mocha, I believe. This is what I started with. And then I dyed it with marigold writ dye to make this over dyed color that I thought was closer to the other version. That's the trees coming through on this. I can figure out what was, I'm like, what is on my fabric? Um, all of the back stitching, almost all the back stitching on the kit directions is in the really dark brown or black. I can't remember what color it is. I decided to do, I did the back stitching on these leaves with the darkest green that's used in the leaves. And I did the back stitching on these berries with the darkest red that's used. I did use that dark brown to do a darker brown to do the edge around this section. And then the only change I made on this one, where's the pattern? These, this checkerboard section up here, it has the darker brown up here and then all of these squares underneath this bar are the lighter brown. And I wanted it in the full coverage version, it's more of a, shaded from dark to light, those checkerboard square. So I still use the same two colors of brown that are called for. I'm using the kit floss. But I kind of made a more uneven edge along here of where it changed from dark to light. And then for a little bit of right where it changed, I, I took one strand of the dark and one strand of the light and did a little bit right where it changes from dark to light. So it was a little more um, gradual. And then I started on this flower that's across the top there. And I went ahead and back stitched it in the green, the darkest green that was used in this leaf. But there is one darker color of green that I didn't realize is used in just a couple of places down here. And now that I backstitched the flower in that medium green, I'm thinking I'm going to pull it out and backstitch it with the darker green. I'm not sure it really shows up. But I probably won't work on this again until next winter, because now it's time to work on spring montage, which I was going to pull out and work on the first day of spring, but my day got away from me and I didn't. So I need to do that today as well. 
Same thing. There's a um, paint free crafts version and there's a Jan Lane kit version. I'm doing the Jan Lane kit version using that same over dyed fabric. I'm using the same color for all four seasons. The light mocha that's been dyed with marigold writ dye. This one also has those checkerboard squares in it. Love these cherry blossoms up here. They are so pretty. I try, I changed, I kind of made a more um, unpredictable line across here to change from the light to dark, but I didn't do what I did on the other one where I mixed one strand of this and one strand of this for the transition. I might go in with just one strand of floss and go over a little bit of the top of these stitches where it transitions to make it less of a stark light to dark. I don't know. I might just wait till later and see if I want to do that or not, if it's really bothering me. But it looks like I have just about, except for the outline maybe, finished that top section. And I'll get to move down and start on a different section. I didn't dye all of these pieces at once. I dyed them one at a time as I started them at the beginning of each season. So even though I use the exact same dye mix, because I just put it in a jar and put it in the fridge, <laughs> sometimes I'd try and make it a little lighter, a little darker, depending on looking at the that season. Some felt like they needed to be darker and some lighter. This one I think is a little more... Um, there's a bigger difference between the dark and the light on this one, but I love it. Kit floss still that came with the Jan Lin kit. Two strands of floss. Unless the directions have you do something different like kits often do. I worked on Hoity Toity one day. Got about a thousand stitches into it. This is by Long Dog Samplers. I am using a conversion by Mrs. Seda Silks. She made a conversion for this piece, a conversion pack of silks, overdyed silks. They are beautiful. I changed a couple, I moved a couple of those silks to a different symbol than what she had on her conversion. And then I also, I didn't use the pink and I added a couple of reds instead. And all of that is in the description box below. And I'm stitching it on 40 count mallow. Oh, I was afraid I had a loose needle there. Nope, just a loose thread. And I Worked on extending the border down right here is what I worked on. Such a beautiful piece. I love it. One strand of floss over two fabric threads on the 40 count. And that is all of the projects, I think, that I worked on since the last video. And I just have a little bit of purchases, shopping. I had ordered these bags before the last video. Remember how I was on a project bag spree, shopping spree? But they didn't come in until after I made the last video. So I bought three bags from Creative Carol Designs. On, on Etsy. Creative with a K. There's her contact information. And I ordered this bee bag, which is so cute. Look at all the honey jars. They have a handle. They're nice and big. I love big, bigger bags. There's the back. There's her label.
Creative Carol Designs, Creative with a K. How's the vinyl front? Nice quality zipper. And she puts the fabric um, tie on the zipper pull. I also ordered this one from her, Sophisticated Christmas. Look at those beautiful trees. And this one. This one reminds me of a long dog sampler. I should probably put one in it. Beautifully made, beautiful stitching on those. Thank you, Carol. And then I just have one more that I ordered from Sherry So Sweet, so as in S-E-W. Sherry is S-H-E-R-I, Sherry So Sweet, also on Etsy. And it is a beautiful quilted, pieced, and quilted bag. Look at those beautifully stitched. All those little squares are so beautifully stitched together. This is the back. Inside, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous bag. Look at the zipper. Pole has a charm, a flower, and a ring. Oh, and I bought some <laughs> carrots, paper. They're like uh, wrapped paper at Hobby Lobby to put on my Easter, Cricut Collection Easter. I think I'll use these to decorate my, when I put that into the frame. I'll show that next time. And I think that is all of the purchases. And I think that's everything. So we will next, in about a week, I have spring break, first week in April. So I am hoping to make another video, at least one, during the, my spring break. So I will see you again in not too long. Bye-bye. This one is Wonderful Counselor, I believe, and I think it was in an old Treasures of Needlework. Christmas, like comes out once a year, big thick magazine type thing. If you want to know what issue and everything, um, let me know and I'll look it up. This is The Day by Lottie Daw. It's charted in blue colors, but I had converted it to these orangey yellow colors. This is a Dimensions kit called O oh Jerusalem. The artwork is by Greg Olson. This was, I believe, I can't remember what the original words were. It was out of Better Homes and Gardens, mag, um, Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. I wanna say it was like a graduation I just used the border and the style of the lettering and then I put that scripture in there because I loved it about Christ. And then, oh, I can't do that. <laughs> this is Names of God by My Big Toe. Catherine helped me with that one. She did most of that border. I was so happy to see the end of that border. Thank <laughs> you.